तब कथामृत तप्त जीवन कविभिरीड़ कलमशापम श्रवण मंगल श्रीमदातत भुवि गृणती ये भूरीदा जना Sri Ram Krishna, while talking with the devotees, said, "Both bhakti yoga and jnana yoga are paths by which you can realize Him, the God. So this is the unique way, the combination of all the paths. Bhagwan Sri Ram Krishna himself practiced, and again and again he is propagating that." This is the first time in the spiritual world we can say someone is speaking in this way and with confidence. Why? Because he himself has traveled. He himself has realized both the paths are true. Now, if we analyze this, the first criteria for both the paths is understanding. Now the bhakti yoga and the jnana yoga. First is understanding. What is that understanding? This world, with its multifarious attraction and aversion, is not the goal. So that is the first understanding, because we are bewildered because of these so many things that are happening, and we give our life for a little thing. of this world which is so temporary <coughs> so obviously when that fast conception comes then only the mind turns towards god otherwise they won't think about it. so he is talking with the devotees those who have already fulfilled this criteria that this world is not a permanent thing the world is not my goal my goal is totally different this thing we must keep in mind otherwise sometimes just out of curiosity we open the book and we gospel of sri ram krishna or any scripture we read and then we say something else no there is nothing not in that way we have to understand the i have understood this truth at least in this life that this world there are many many good things are there bads are also there but this is temporary so this is not my goal second is the faith there is god or the brahman the god for the path of devotion brahman for the path of knowledge so god and the brahman these are the two it is there the, that is the faith why i say faith because before before realization nothing but faith unless and until we are realizing it is only faith we are only believing and nothing else so this is the second thing the faith after i am convinced that this is not the world has nothing to do with me i am not going to do anything with it this is fine up second step i am going to go to god or brahman so that is the faith that it exists somewhere third is a fault when i think that there is god i have to take up the effort i have to do something otherwise how, how i will reach i know the capital of america is washington dc this is the knowledge and the people told me this that geographical book is telling that history is telling that this i know but still it is a fail because i have not visited now i have to have the effort what i have to purchase the ticket of some transport or i have to drive the car to reach over there this is the effort i shall follow the path of affirmation or the bhakti or i shall follow the path of negation that is jnana so this is the effort 
on my behalf. And fourth, a clear conception about the path and the goal. So friends, this is the problem. The millions and millions of people who are trying to realize God or having some conception of God or some divine idea, but as our idea is not clear, conception is not clear about the path and the goal, we reach nowhere. Whole life we are doing something or other, reaching nowhere. So this is the thing that we have to understand, clear conception about the path and the goal. No problem about the jnana, the path of negation, neti neti, or path of affirmation, iti iti. But that, about that path we should have to have clear indication. We will read from the pages of the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, which is 82, 83, 84, wonderfully he has explained about this. Now we find over here, he says, the path of knowledge, he is mentioning over here, the path of knowledge and discrimination is difficult indeed. And he said, Brahman cannot be described in words. This is Ramakrishna is speaking actually, truly, the Vedantic terms. Brahman cannot be described in words. Why? Because it is not a Janna Padartha, as they call it, that we can understand, we can know, you cannot know it. To know the time, causation, all these things are necessary is beyond that. We cannot reach over there. This is a very, very subtle conception which very few people can understand. Not that it is not there, not that people cannot, people can do, but very subtle conception. It is there, but your eyes cannot see it. Your hand cannot touch it. Tongue cannot express it. So that, that way is very, very subtle because it is beyond time, space and causation. But it is still there. So Sri Ramakrishna is telling, Brahman cannot be described in words. Brahman has only been indirectly hinted, indirectly hinted at by the scriptures. When one speaks about the, now you listen to this word, perfect Vedantic way Sri Ramakrishna is explaining. Cowherd village on the Ganges. One directly states that the village is situated on the bank of the Ganges. Sri Ramakrishna is indicating that Vedantic uh, the way of explaining things, that's called Lakshana. The Lakshana means indication. The Vedanta will speak about the Brahman, how? Through indication. Why? Because you cannot directly speak about it. The indication is there. And this indication means you have to have the intellect to understand it, otherwise you won't. Here, there are three stages of indication. One is Jahal Lakshana. Lakshana means the indication. The first is Jahal. The Jahal means discarding the direct meaning, accepting implied meaning. The cowherd village is on the Ganges. It, is, it cannot be. Ganges is a river. The village cannot be on the Ganges, it is on the bank of the Ganges. So direct meaning in the river, but it is not possible. So we discard that, take indirect meaning, that is called Jahal Lakshana. Then comes Ajahal Lakshana, direct meaning is not completely given up, but real meaning is hinted. And third come Jahal Ajahal Lakshana. 
that previously we have already discussed in details about the Lakshana. Here also I give the hint, the Lakshana. So this Lakshana that Sri Ramakrishna is indicating and through that we can reach to the Brahman. And again we will come to that. He says, why shouldn't man be able to realize the formless Brahman? He must be, but it is extremely difficult. He cannot, if he has even the slightest trace of worldliness, he can be directly aware of Brahman in his inmost consciousness only when he renounces all sense objects, form, taste, smell, touch and sound and only when his mind completely stops functioning and then too when his mind stops functioning how the mind is working on the basis of the collection of information of our senses the minds work on that only the eyes goes and bring back some report and through the touches, through the smell, through the sound, like that way it goes on. So obviously, if the mind is not getting the feedback from the senses, then what happens? It stops functioning. So what is meditation? Meditation means stop functioning of the mind. How it is possible? We give only one idea to the mind and force the mind, compel the mind to stick to that one idea. And that is called Saguna Brahma or the Brahman or God with epithets and the mind is concentrated on that. And when we are perfected on that, we go to Nirguna, Dhyana, meditation, without any object. Then where the mind is going? to the source. What is that? Joy. The feeling of joy, the taste of joy, that is a, I don't know who are, those who are trying to meditate, to control the mind, they can only understand how it goes, how difficult it is. Even given the object in front of the mind, we cannot concentrate. That's why Hindus, they have developed the images and the pictures, so many gods and goddesses and so many things. Why only one object to control the mind? It is not the rituals. Rituals are only to support that function. The goal that through the rituals we go to that. When we give the instructions to the disciples, we always say that inside the mind, you should develop that. Slowly, slowly you are washing the feet of the God and then decorating and then feeding the God and these, 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 this. Why? Because the mind, it needs some activity and we give the activity. And when the activity is continuing, slowly, slowly mind is withdrawn from the external world. And then by that way, step by step, we go towards inside the mind and finally we see nothing but the light and we merge into that light. But that light when I am merging, it gives me tremendous joy. So after a few moments, when I come out of the meditation, the only thing that remains in my mind is the joy. And that gives me tremendous freshness also. And that is the meditation. Sri Ramakrishna is telling if you are following the path of jnana, ultimately what will happen? You will have a knowledge. What is that knowledge? Asthiti. It is there. It's not that you will immediately realize that Brahman, only that consciousness will come. Realization will come. Confirmation will come. It is there. What is that? Consciousness. So, immediately the Pandit who was there, he quoted from the scripture. The Sri Ramakrishna is telling, in order to realize God, a devotee is going to the devotee. Here the asthiti means 
avastha traya vichara you know i am just indicating is not going in details the one is lakshana vichara the lakshana through the lakshana we can have the conception that brahman and the jiva are the same the first jahal then ajahal then jahal ajahal this jahal giving up ajahal accepting when we combine that then we get the true meaning tattvamasi so tattvamasi you are that brahman but how i will know that i am brahman the vedanta particularly advaita vedanta they keep the steps that this is the way if you you can understand you are true that so that brahman is consciousness the jiva me is also consciousness so naturally the both the consciousness are the same so that way we can understand that we are the same jahal ajahal lakshana then astiti consciousness is there how to understand that avastha traya vichara what is that avastha traya jagrat swapna and susupti these are the three condition of mind this is called avastha condition condition of the mind jagrat our body and mind completely awake then swapna body is absent is lying down dead but mind is active susupti body and mind both are inactive when both are inactive when there is no the presence of the body there is no presence of the mind then how it is possible that i can say i was sleeping who is that i who reported me that is called astiti it must be there the consciousness must be there otherwise how can you prove it so all the lakshana the this is the way we reach over there so this is the path of gyana we can understand it's so difficult all people cannot do it it's not possible for the ordinary people the constantly you have you have to go on thinking about that pondering about that meditating on that constantly you have to think that this is the consciousness which is active not the body not the mind something is beyond so that is called. now sri ramakrishna is coming to the another path and he is telling that in order to realize god a devotee should make use of a particular attitude now in the beginning i was telling that we should have the effort and we should have a clear idea about the effort what is the effort to activities to reach to the goal what is the goal either god or brahman and now if we are trying to reach to the brahman which is the goal of the gyanis the path of knowledge he should practice that lakshana avastha traya vichara and that all those and here the devotees which is the goal is the god then he should take up some attitude towards god what is the attitude here sri ramakrishna said hero i am going to realize god who can stop me so that is the heroic way he never bothers about anything second comes the friend shakha shakya i am the god the friendliness with the god all the time having the company of god and very happy having that company then third comes that handmaid dasi bhav so that is major, that mainly the women they practice that and just with the mother holy mother helping holy mother in different way so this is the way we are reading the book and thinking that way constantly remembering that and feeling the affinity i am with the mother in the company of the mother serving mother and also batsal as a child the child has only one thing complete faith father is there mother is there i need not to do anything if i am hungry mother knows 
I will just call mother, mother will feed me. Father will protect me. So what it needs, only faith and nothing else for the child. So I am a devotee. I like to realize God and I take the attitude of a child. What should be my behavior? Completely simple that depending on God and nothing else. And I am a handmate, Dasi. I am in the company of the Divine Mother of God. Whatever I have to, I am doing at the behest of the Mother or a friend or a hero. So this attitude I have to take. But in the Bhakti they say Sakya, Dasya, Vatsala, etc. So these are the attitudes we should take. Mani Mali, when they were conversing, he, just, he said, only then one can feel attached to God. He's just commenting, not understanding, I think, the seriousness with which Sri Ramakrishna is telling this. Then the Sri Ramakrishna, for many days I cherished the feeling that I was a companion of the Divine Mother. Why he is disclosing this? Because Mani Manlik, without practicing anything, he simply commented, what? Only then one can feel attached to God. How do you know? Have you ever practiced? If this is the problem with the devotees. You will find that any new person has come in the ashram, immediately those who are old, they will go on giving a lot of advices to the treasures. Why? Because they think that we know it. How do you know? Have you ever practiced those things that you are telling? You are making more confused. That at the time of Sri Ramakrishna, in the presence of that holy company, and Sri Ramakrishna, the God himself, this type of people, Mali Manlik was a rich man. So he thought that I have right to comment, he commented. Sri Ramakrishna didn't ask him to stop. That's the beauty of Sri Ramakrishna. He is immediately, in an indirect way, telling, I don't know whether Mani Malik understood it or not, but we should understand this. We have no right if you are not practicing. Sri Ramakrishna immediately said, he said, you have to take an attitude. Mani Malik said, then only we can get the company of God. Sri Ramakrishna, without protesting, oh, you don't know nothing. He said nothing like that. That is the beauty of a person, not hurting, but rectifying in a very different way. He said, I practiced many years. For many days, I cherished uh, the feeling that I was a companion of the Divine Mother. I used to say, I am the handmaid of Brahma Mai, the blissful mother. This is Sri Ramakrishna. When you read this gospel, we become more a nice person. How to deal with others, how to behave with others. Some gross-minded people, they come. But what will be our attitude? See how Sri Ramakrishna is telling. Some soul, now he is giving the whole distinctions of different type of people. Some souls realize God without practicing any spiritual discipline. They are called Nitya Siddhya, eternally perfect. Apparently they have not done anything, but they have realized God, which means they have done it in the past life. So they have realized God in this life is nothing. It was in there, only they manifested it. Those who have realized God through austerity, japa and the like are called sadhana siddhya. The first is nitya siddhya, eternally perfect. Then comes sadhana siddhya. They have tried and then got perfected. Perfect through spiritual discipline. And then there are called kripa siddhya. Perfect through the divine grace, the kripa siddhya. These last may be compared to a room kept dark a thousand years, which becomes 
light, the moment a lamp is brought in, that is called Kripa Siddhya. So we are Siddhya, means perfect, then it's realized. And it may be Nitya, it may be Sadhana, it may be Kripa, then Hatat Siddhya, suddenly he becomes Siddhya, suddenly attain God vision. Their case is like that of a poor boy who was suddenly found favor with a rich man. And the rich man marries his daughter to the boy and along with her gives him land, house, carriage, servants and so forth. This is called Hatat Siddhya. There's a one family and the gentleman was fabulously rich and he was having three daughters and he married to the intelligent but poor so that he knew they won't leave the, the his daughters, the wives. And condition was the property will be in the name of my daughter. You can be there, you can enjoy as her husband. If she passes away before you, then it, it will belong to you. I know one of such person. And I was wondering how this man could be, become so rich. Very cruel type of person, very cunning. And uh, he was never giving any donation to anyone. Not even when he used to visit, never brought even the sweetmeats also in that summer, though he was very rich. So afterwards I came to know, and then I go, oh, this is actually Hatartha Siddhya. So he became, just because he married a very rich man's daughter, so he has become rich, but the behavior is not aristocratic. The behavior is just like the poor person. Aristocratic people are different time. So here Sri Ramakrishna suddenly attained the vision and he is giving the example the poor boy get the favor of the rich man. There are still another class of devotees, Swapna Siddhya, who have had the vision of God in a dream, Swapna Siddhya. One of our, the great Swami, he got the, the, the you know, he, he was here in America. He got the vision in dream of Swami Vivekananda. And when he was very young, afterwards he came to Belurpat and Vivekananda passed away. Before that, he reached to Belurpat and told, Mahapurush Maharaj was there. I have seen this dream. Is it true? Be immediately, the Mahapurush Maharaj said, you are Sapna Siddhya. Of course, it is true. And you have realized God. So that was the Sapna Siddhya. Surendra, the way the Thakur is telling like this, you know, the devotees were very close to Thakur. The Surendra particularly was very close to Thakur and he is telling, let us go to sleep then, because Swapna Siddhya, if you see that, the, in dream we can get that. Let us go to sleep then, we shall wake up and find ourselves Babus. Babus means aristocrats. Sri Ramakrishna tenderly, there also he is not asking him not to uh, use the word in that way because he is giving that wonderful picture. So this is the problem when you are talking with the people, if they are not serious, then it is very difficult. But Sri Ramakrishna's patience, he, is, he used to love the Surendra, so very tenderly he is telling, you are already a Babu. Surendra was a deputy, I mean a very rich man, so you are, you are already a Babu. Babu means aristocrat. And you need not to bother about that. Then he said, the Nitya Siddhya is in a class apart. It's very difficult, like the Swami Vivekananda, Brahmananda, they are all Nitya Siddhyas. And all that we see, their practices only for us. Then he is giving the example. They are like the pumpkin vine. First fruit, then the flower. Usually all, it becomes first flower and from that comes the fruit. And for them, it is the first fruit, the pumpkin, it is back. Pandit is smiling at the illustration, pumpkin illustration. 
Master, there is the instance of Prahlada, he is the Nitya Siddhya. While writing the letter Ka, he shed a stream of tears. Ka means the Krishna, he remembered the Krishna, he was a devotee. The moment he wrote that word Ka, immediately he went into trance, he started meditating on the Krishna. The master was pleased with the Pandit's humility. He praised him to the devotees and he is telling, he has such a nice nature. So the Sri Ramakrishna, he knew how to inspire people, direct them towards the positive way. So he is telling, he has such a nice nature. You find no difficulty in driving a nail into a mud wall. But its point breaks if you try to drive it against the stone. That those who are very, very egoistic, they will never learn anything. But those who are soft, genuine, Sri Ramakrishna is comparing their mind as the mud wall. You can nail it very easily. And he is continuing in this way. Pandit, but one can heart a, heart a crocodile. Sri Ramakrishna is giving the example. It is a hard wall like the crocodile back. But the crocodile, you can break, you can touch the belly. belly crocodile's belly is soft. All is laughing. Master, what good is there in reading a whole lot of scripture? See, this is Sri Ramakrishna. Not that he is not asking us to read the scripture. But what is the purpose of reading the scripture? That he is telling. If you are trying to understand God, read and then immediately take up a path and try to follow. Because life is short. You do not know what is going to happen when. So th that is the yearning. That's why I was telling the clear conception about the path and the goal. If you don't have the conception of goal that I have to realize God, I have to realize Brahman and time is short, I must take the direct way that is the practices. And what is the practice? Purifying the mind. How to purify the mind? Taking it away from the worldly things, worldly thoughts, worldly actions. How it is possible? giving all the action at the feet of your God. Arpanam astu. I am giving it at your feet. Mentally, every moment you are offering it to God, what happens? Good and bad cannot touch you. So you are doing everything in the normal way, but at the same time, nothing can touch you. That's why Bhagavan Sri Krishna asked Arjuna, Maam Anusmara Yuddhacha. So when we are reading the Gita, 700 verses again and again we are repeating. But if we know only this half a sloka, you remember me and do your daily duties. Remember me and go and work. Maam Anusmara Yuddhacha. A go on remembering me that I am at your back. Everything that is happening because of me. So whatever you are doing, offer it to me. That much. That is why Sri Ramakrishna is telling that you need not to go on reading so much. What good is there in reading a whole lot of scripture? And can you complete reading scripture? Only Hindu scripture if you try to read it is impossible. Only one book if you try to complete it is also impossible. Bhagavata, huge book. And then there are Upanishads, so many Upanishads. And there are Bhashyas. Different ways people are explaining. Thorough confusion. If you read, then afterwards you'll be, no, it is no more. It's not necessary. So best way is to follow the paths indicated by Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. That's why whoever comes and wants to read the scripture, I say, go to Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna first. Read that. Have a clear mind, understanding of the spiritual path. Then you 
choose anything that you like. The path of knowledge, good, go away. With all these, so many books are there, read it. So the Sri Ramakrishna is telling, what good is there in the study of philosophy? What is the use of talking big? Now slowly, at the beginning, one should concentrate on God with form. I underlined it. At the beginning, one should concentrate on God with form. Why? At the beginning. Why without the form, we cannot concentrate. So I talked with one Muslim friend. So I was telling, can you concentrate? It will we try to imagine Kaaba or something like that. I think that is also an image. You are not supposed to, isn't it? It will otherwise we cannot do anything. Other, or, or I have to think of a, a star or the crescent or the moon, like that, like that, something, object. So that's why the Hindus are very, very intelligently, they have introduced the images. Whatever image you like, at the beginning, one should concentrate on God with form. Then there are devotees who are beyond the three gunas, Satya, Raja and Tama. They are eternally devoted to God, like the Narada. And the Sri Ramakrishna said all this and remained silent for some time. Whatever he has said, he gave them the opportunity to digest so they can ponder. Then he is telling, Pandit is telling, said, how does one get rid of callousness? How does one get rid of callousness? Laughter makes me think of muscles and nerves. Grief makes me think of the nervous system. See, if you are reading, particularly those who are the doctors and studying the medicine and the biology, you know that there are all numerological different things are there. The moment someone is laughing, immediately your mind is going, not the joy that he is enjoying and expressing through the laugh, rather it goes to the nervous system. How peculiar it is. So the Pandit is asking, I cannot think of anything but the very gross thing, the so what to do? The Sri Ramakrishna is smiling. He is telling, that is why Narayan Shastri used to say, the harmful effect of the study of the scripture is that it encourages renouncing and arguing. Oh, encourages reasoning and arguing. Sorry. Encourages reasoning and arguing. And constantly people, they feel like arguing and reasoning. That is Narayan Shastri. He was a Shastri. He was also a great scholar. Pandit, is there no way for us then? Master, yes. There is the path of discrimination. And this discrimination, the bichara, because this person, this Pandit, and he was uh, studying the scripture and debating, that was his nature. So Sri Ramakrishna is encouraging him to follow the path of discrimination. The way lies to discrimination, renunciation and passionate yearning for God. Discrimination, vichara, renunciation, dhyaga and passionate yearning for God. These are the three things. First is vichara. What is that vichara? This world is transitory. So obviously me with this body and mind, this association is also transitory. I am also going to die. And all this world is going to change. Everything is going to change. This is the discrimination, vichara. So satya and mithya. What is that mithya? Not that it is not there. It is there, but it is existing temporarily. So it is not the permanent. Then what happens? I renounce. What do I renounce? My ego. I should do this. I must get that. All that. Ahamkara. The ego. I give up. 
When I give up the ego, what remains? Passionate yearning for God's realization. In the beginning, I told, the first thing is understanding. What is that understanding? There is God. It must be God. And this world is transitory. This is the understanding and also the faith, the belief. I have not realized God, but I believe by seeing the lives of the great sages and saints. Their lives is the other examples, the mirrors that reflecting the existence of God. So that way I must do, and he says, the yearning, unless a man practices discrimination, he cannot utter the right words. So this, unless a man is properly understanding, he cannot say the right word. Now he is giving an example. Pandit Samadhyayi, there was another Pandit, very Sanskrit, uh, the scholar, said, God is dry. But the, his Rasha Sarupa, about the God, it says Rasha Sarupa. All the joy that we see is the source is that God. Rasa Sarupa, embodiment of joy. And this Pandit, without realizing God, he says, he is dry. So Sri Ramakrishna was not at all happy with the Pandit. Now does anyone keep horse in a cow shed? Then he is giving that example. Everybody is smiling. That means he doesn't know anything. About God, he is not having any conception and he is giving, talking about the God, what happens? He proves himself a completely fool. Pandit is smiling and Sri Ramakrishna with a laugh. Then Hazra also commented, Master, you see, there is no need to read too much of the scriptures. There is no need to read too much of the scriptures. If you read too much, you will be inclined to reasoning and argue. So Gita, 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 if you go on repeating, what comes? Tyagi, Tyagi. So you understand that. What you are tagging? Maam Anusmara Yuddhacha. I am accepting God as my master and the guide. And then whatever I am doing at the behest of the God and nothing else, nothing will touch you. The success or failure, mostly what happens? When I am doing something, if I am successful, I am so happy. The moment I am, my venture fails, I am so unhappy. People will put finger on me. But I know I, because of the God I was doing, because of the God I am successful, because of the God I am not successful. So that way, how wonderful the mind will be calm and quiet for each and everything. Yes, the way to realize God is through discrimination, renunciation and yearning for Him. What kind of yearning? One should yearn for God as the cow with yearning heart runs after its calf. The Pandit also giving an example. Then the master is adding, add your tears to your yearning. So this is the beauty of the Sri Krishna. Now what is the beauty? He is clubbing the devotion with the practice of the knowledge. In the path of knowledge, the three steps you are taking, again and again he is repeating. The first is discrimination, vichara. Vichara, sat, asat, vichara which is permanent and which is temporary, that which are. Along with that renunciation, we go for the permanent one, that is Brahman, the consciousness, and give up the world, which is temporary, constantly changing. And the third is yearning, my effort, 100% effort to reach to that Brahman. Sri Ramakrishna is adding, he is telling, add your tears to your yearning. And if you can renounce everything through discrimination and dispassion, then you will be able to see God. That yearning brings about God intoxication. 
whether you follow the path of knowledge or the path of devotion. The both, the main thing is your yearning. The moment you get up in the morning and say, God, once again, one day that you have given to me, every moment of it, the 24 hours that I am going to in this day, please be with me. Or I am discriminating at the same time that as the rishis of the old, they were praying, the hiranvayena patre na satya sapihitam mukam tattam bhushan napabrinu satya dharmaya drishtaye. With a golden plate, you are covering the face of the truth. Please remove it. I want to get the, I want to realize that face to face with the truth. I like to realize that truth. That is the yearning. With the yearning, if you can add tears, what is the tear? Devotion. Devotion to the path of knowledge. And this devotion means the hundred percent that I am devoted to what I am doing. So that Sri Ramakrishna said, add your tears to your yearning. That means I am sincere, true. Whether in the path of devotion or in the path of knowledge, I am sincere. So this is the there's a great deal of difference between the knowledge of a householder and of an all renouncing sannyasi. Why? Because he has sannyasi, he has nothing except God to achieve true sannyasins. Nothing except God. There is no difference between my relatives, my family, my country, my association, nothing, not at all. But a householder won't be able to do that that far. He has the devotion, he has the love, but at the same time his attachment to so many things. That's why the realization differs. Now he is mentioning about the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He was endowed with both the knowledge of Brahman and the ecstatic love of God. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he is hinting, but in the life of Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna also, we find the same thing. That both are present over there. Advaya tattya samahita chittam, projala bhakti patabrita vrittam, karma kalevara adbhuta chishtam. Swami Vivekananda, he is writing, yami gurum sharanam bhavavaityam. He is the doctor of the, this world. How? Because he is giving the medicine so that we can completely get freedom from the bondage of birth and death. Bhava Vaityam. And he is having that knowledge. Adhoya Tattva. Adhoya. There is no two. There is only one. The Brahman is one. Consciousness is one. All pervading. Samahita Chittam. He knows it. But he knew it. The ordinary people who understand, won't understand it. Rather, they will make it completely in a different way. So, Prajala Bhakti Patabrita Vrittam, externally, he is all bhakti. Mother, please reveal thyself to me. Please listen to my prayer. He is crying and beating his chest and practicing austerity. So why? Because of this. This is the devotion. But both are there. Karma Kalevara Adbhuta Cheshtam. He is the whole personality, is karma. He is doing it for the betterment of others. No attachment at all. So these three wonderful paths combine. And then the moment he is united with the God, Yoga. So all the four paths we can see very clearly in the life of Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. He is a perfect personality. So that he is telling, but Sri Ramakrishna is mentioning about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he said, he was endowed with both knowledge of Brahman and static love of God. And to the Pandit, he is mentioning, one can attain spiritual consciousness through both affirmation and negation. So today's our topic, Path to realize Brahman or the God through
through affirmation and negation. What is affirmation? Everything that I see is nothing but the manifestation of my beloved, my God. Everything is nothing but my God. Yatra yatra netra spure, tatra tatra, not netra pade, tatra tatra krishna spure. Wherever, whatever I see is nothing but Krishna only, my beloved, my God. So that is called iti. I am not negating, but I am affirmating, I am accepting everything as my God. And similar way, negation. Another person is coming into, no, 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 this is not God, this is not. No iti, no iti, no iti, not this, not this, not this. So then suddenly he feels the tremendous joy and the fearful, completely free from the fear. And he knows, I am that Brahman, I am eternal. I don't have the birth or the death. I am only in that eternal bliss. I survive. <coughs> and that is called the path of negative. Both negation and affirmation are ways to realize one and the same goal. The so, Siddhartha Krishna is giving emphasis again and again because there is a tremendous conflict between the path of knowledge and the path of devotion. Those who are devotee, they don't like to accept the path of knowledge and those who are following the path of knowledge always criticize the devotees. So that is the reason Sri Ramakrishna is combining and look at it, both negation and affirmation are ways to realize one and the same goal. Swami Vivekananda, he said, by unselfish work, one can reach where Buddha reached by his knowledge, Christ by his prayer. The path of knowledge the Buddha followed, path of devotion that the Christ followed, you can reach over there. Why? Because the goal is the same. If we understand these, then at least those who are thinking in this way, particularly among the Hindus, this path, conflict between the knowledge and the devotion, that will be completely eradicated, completely gone. If you can understand this truth of Sri Ramakrishna. So these three pages that I was reading in from the gospel is so important. So very important. Those who are sincere, they should understand this. Both negation and affirmation are the ways to realize one and the same goal. Infinite are the op opinions and infinite are the ways. Here, Sri Ramakrishna is not stopping. Infinite are the opinions. Anyone can think about God and anyone can find out his own method to realize God. Infinite are the opinions and infinite are the ways. But how I will know that he has reached the goal? That is one. It cannot be two. It is one. How I will understand that? He will be full of love and unselfishness. The person may travel from different paths, different paddhati, system, but the result that will be in his character is very clear. What is that result? Pure love and unselfishness that will manifest in his life. Then we will say yes. But you must remember one thing. The injunction is that the path of devotion described by Narada is the best suited to the Kali Yuga. Sri Ramakrishna is mentioning. According to this path, first come Bhakti, then Bhava. And when Bhakti is mature, that is Bhava, then higher than bhava is the mahabhava and prema. The ordinary mortal does not attain mahabhava and prema. He who has achieved these has realized the goal, that is to say, has attained God. 
Sri Ramakrishna again while preaching eliminate the head and the tail that is to say emphasis only the essentials pandit was commenting in expounding religion one has to use a great many words because i am explaining so i am quoting from here there etc etc the siram krishna while preaching eliminate head and tail that is to say emphasize only the essentials and what is the essential god realization is the goal of every human life and how to reach to god whatever path you think that you can follow you can take up either bhakti or gyan but the only thing is you must be very very sincere the yearning that for god that must be very very sincere and along with that a thought should be there i am following this path because i like it others may not follow me my path it doesn't matter because they will also realize god in their own way only this if it is we we can again and again reach out to people and tell just pick up any one thing and manifest the divinity that is within you and that divinity is love that divinity is unselfishness and make your human life full of joy peace and become a missionary of peace your life wherever you go whatever you talk whomever you are meeting all will be full of joy and encouragement and that is the final stage of religion so sri ramakrishna is teaching in this way emphasize only the essentials of the religion thank you let us conclude with this stotra niranjanam nityam anantarupam